Now let's work on the hydration of terminal alkynes. In this case, we need an enhanced electrophile. So instead of just the acid, we're going to add mercury too. Because this is terminal, we're going to get Markovnikov selectivity because we have a side of the pi bond that has more hydrogen. The result of this is going to be a ketone product, and we'll get a single product when we work with the terminal alkyne. So as far as predicting the product, you can do it pretty easily like you did the internal alkynes, but since we have selectivity, the hydrogen will go to this side where there's already one hydrogen. The OH will go to this side where it's more substituted. We go from the triple bond to the double bond. That double bond still has the phenyl attached. It still has the original hydrogen. And then we add the new H and the OH. We then need to tautomerize. In the tautomerization, we go from the double bond to the single bond. We still have the hydrogen. And in fact, when you go through the mechanism, you end up adding another hydrogen to that side and the OH becomes a double bond O. Now we would normally not draw in all of those hydrogens and more neatly could just draw it like this. And that product is of course a ketone. Let's take a look at this mechanism and see how the mercury gets involved. The first step involves reacting the alkyne with the mercury, and mercury is a little bit unusual, as are most metals. And in addition to having this positive charge, it also has electrons that it can add. And this is almost like how we added a carbene across the pi bond. We're going to do the same thing with the mercury. So we're going to take one of the pi bonds over to bond with the mercury, and then the lone pair on the mercury will bond to one of the carbons. The ultimate result is we go from the alkyne to the alkene, but then we have two bonds to this mercury. I'm not going to write it because it's a mouthful and you don't really have to know this, but this is called a mercurinium ion. From there, now the water gets involved. And you can imagine that this ion here is quite electrophilic, and the water is going to add to the more substituted carbon. The same way it did when we had uh, like a chloronium ion in the presence of water. The water prefers the more substituted carbon because it has more positive character. So I'll add the water here and break that open. So now we have the phenyl still in place. And the water has its two hydrogens still in the oxygen. And then we get the mercury. Now, since it's only attached by one bond, it's mercury plus. Next, a base can take one of the protons from the protonated water. I'll just use B. Once we take that, we end up with this intermediate. Next, we're finally ready to get rid of the mercury. And there is acid around, the sulfuric acid. So in the presence of acid, these two electrons in this carbon-mercury bond, they will leave the mercury and come over and take the proton. So what happens, we end up now with a proton in that position. 
And then because the mercury lost those two electrons, we've regenerated mercury too. So that's where the catalyst gets regenerated. And then finally, the enol will tautomerize to give us the ketone. And that's the mechanism.